So we did a little follow-up video on the motion sensor comparison we did. We had a few questions on different sensors, such as the lux sensors and the temperature, et cetera, from these motion sensors. Plus, we may talk about some other sensors we didn't do in a future comparison. So let's check it out. Now for additional sensors that are packed into these motion sensors or occupancy sensors. This is the Iris, that's the discontinued one. Now, of course, you can get them still on eBay, but the prices are a little high right now. This one does pack additional temperature and humidity. And the Hue does pack in temperature and lux, which is going to be the amount of light that's in a room. And sometimes that is very helpful to determine if it's basically dark or light in the room. So, hey, should I turn the lights on? Yes or no, depending on if it's dark or not. Same thing for the Aquaria one. This one also packs in temperature and lux. So we're going to do a little comparison. And what I did bring in is if you've been around the channel for a little bit, you can remember this is the ESP Home kind of multi-sensor. It is a powered by USB. It is ESP8266 based. There is an AM312 motion sensor on the front. There's a DHT22, which is eh, okay for accuracy. And there is a TSL5 or 2591. Well, I'll put the number probably on the slide. I get confused with all these. But it's a great little I squared C Lux sensor that's in the top. Oh, and there is a little pixel in here for doing RGB stuff. So we'll compare it with the Lux and see how they do come out as well as for temperature and humidity. I have the SwitchBot temperature and humidity sensor. This one's Bluetooth, but hey, it had a good display. Since this little multi-sensor, the DHT22 is just okay for things, and you do get an additional little bit of possible heating from the ESP chip, so it may be able to run a little higher. And then there's the Xiaomi little BLE temperature sensors that a lot of people use with ESP Home. And if you're not familiar with that, hey, maybe we'll do a little thing on how to add that into Tasmoda and ESP Home. They're great little sensors and they're stupid cheap. So let's compile all the data together and we'll t give an idea of do these other additional sensors just suck and should you just use them as motion sensors or hey, do they also double as those other sensors as well? So you can see in this comparison, the Aquaria is at currently 75. We're definitely not 75 in this room. Don't even have the thermostat set at 75. And that's what I have found. The Aquaria runs very high. I wouldn't say very high. It just runs several degrees high compared to some other sensors. I would say that the Xiaomi and the SwitchBot display, I mean, look at those. Those are 73.4, 73.2, or 73.4. Those are pretty dead on. I would call them very close to what it is in this room. Now, is it really calibrated? But hey, the, both of those do agree. Now, again, like I did say, the DHT22 kind of sucks. It is getting some ESP possibly heating. So... That's that sense node that's running around 77 degrees. So it's a little higher. Yeah, it's just not a good control for this. And I have found the hue. It does run a little low for some reason. But that iris was very close in a lot of the tests and it just worked well for temperature. Now for humidity, Again, the, these two displays are pretty well in agreement, and I probably would call that pretty close to what's in this room at this point. And the DHT22, it's not the best for humidity, but hey, the iris did okay. I mean, it is showing 59%, not too bad, maybe a little on the high side, but over, well, it works for humidity sensor, which is kind of weird in a motion sensor. Now the Lux sensor, I'm going to call the sense node being 
probably pretty calibrated given it is a really good sensor from what I found. It does even work really well in low light situations. Now one thing you'll notice with these motion sensors is they won't always report a light change unless there is also a motion change. That's just due to the nature of them sleeping. So it's kind of like, hey, does motion trigger? And then you need to read the lux to see if you want to turn the light on or off. So all in all, they run a little high, I would say, but that's not a bad thing. So let's just see if we can turn the camera lights down here and see how low light we can get. So we're going to be pretty low here. We can show in 13 lux on the ESP one. 25 and 73 and I just want to make sure I am triggering them to report their lux works out you would just definitely need to check your range on what you know they how it works out in every single installation so let's see how much light we can pack through these things and just see what maybe their max is now you'll see this is exactly what I'm talking about well it just triggered as soon as I was talking, since this does have that long cooldown period, you can see it did stay at the lower lux level for a while. And uh, one thing I did notice, this thing does max at a thousand lux. And of course, you can see that the Hue and the ESP based one is definitely a lot higher in their range of what they can do. It could make a difference based on the color of light and whatnot for, but you can see they do register quite high and the lights are really bright at this point. So definitely kudos to them for Hue. I mean, you do definitely get what you pay for on this Hue sensor. I mean, it's definitely reads a really wide range of the amount of light in the room. I don't know who would have this much light in the room. You're absolutely nuts if you would. Now hopefully that answers a lot of your questions and everything and comments. I do appreciate it on the different motion sensors. Now, I would like to do some additional testing with motion sensors. Now, I know some people have asked about the IKEA or that trade free or however you pronounce it. Don't ask me. I always screw up names. But I can't get IKEA to send me one. If somebody has one for sale or I can just borrow Please let me know. I'd like to throw it in the pile in the future test. I am going to see about getting that Shelly Wi-Fi motion sensor. And since we are breaking that rule of doing that Wi-Fi one, I do want to compare it to the king of one I've been using for years in a lot of my different projects, the AM312 motion sensor. It's pretty cheap. Easy to install on a bunch of little different light switches and hide and everything. It's great for automated lighting and it just works well. And, and there's no batteries. But sometimes that's not a good thing because you may not be able to put it in a place where you can't, don't have any power. So that's all for this one. I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers and all the YouTube members. It helps bring new projects to the channel all the time. Goodbye. Um, press all of the buttons and y'all take care.